Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bring them out to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some concerning news, especially what's going on in the market and just the overall sentiment of what's going on. First up, whales move over $4 billion in Bitcoin during Sunday's market carnage. And then when I take a look at this, I think to myself, are whales actually necessary? And actually, are they actually good for the cryptocurrency and digital asset market. We're gonna take a look at that and just a little bit of a price history, talking about five facts about Bitcoin corrections. And the correction and the downtrend that we saw just yesterday is absolutely nothing compared to what we've seen and what we are going to see. So we'll take a look at those two uh, articles. But first, take a look at what's going on into the market. Let me update this. This is uh, Trade the Chain with Sentiment Analysis. I'd like to take a look at what people are feeling. And you can see it right here, the sentiment over here, I mean, you got Bitcoin at 56,000, which is actually pretty good if you think about it, because we were down like 52,000. So, hey, <laughs> not too bad, honestly. Then we have uh, Ethereum at 2200. Uh, it's up a little bit. Everything's up a little bit. Over seven days, it just depends. Uh, XRP's up a little bit. Dogecoin's up massively, whatever reason, and uh, everything else. So it's, that's not the that's not the story. The story is. I like to peruse around Twitter just to see what's going on and see what people are saying. And uh, I will say, this is a different dip than what uh, I'm used to as far as the sentiment uh, that is out there. A lot of people, especially people who have been around for a long time, have even talked about getting out right now. And um, it's concerning because every time I see these types of things, I'm like, hmm. What else is going on in the market? What is really happening? Well, when people say this market is different, it sure is. So this bearish sentiment, especially with Bitcoin, is really not surprising, especially what's going on. So I want to just take a trip down memory lane a little bit, a bit and just take a look at what was happening over the weekend, uh, what is happening right now, and what I believe is going to happen uh, pretty much uh, coming up uh, very soon. So I just want to start off with this. This is a, uh, a quote. It's from Nathan Rothschild, one of the Rothschilds, uh, very famous investors. And he said like this, he goes, uh, I never invest at the bottom and I always sell too soon. I never invest at the bottom and I always sell too soon. This is the most prominent investor out there. So you have to understand that uh, when people are talking about, you know what, I'm going to time the market. I'm going to you know, do it really well. They're not going to do it real well. But the real question is, when do you have to get out? When do you want to get out? So let's just real quick. Um, we went over this in detail uh, on Sunday. It was uh, me and actually Alex Mascioli, uh joined me. And we talked about the different things that were going on in uh, behind the scenes. And a lot of things you've already, you've already heard about. There was massive liquidations of $10 billion. There was a lot of different actions as far as different wallets being moved around with uh, Bitcoin. There was a power outage in China, which uh, led to a uh, drastic reduction in uh, the hash rate. And then, of course, there was a big rumor flying around that the, uh, it wasn't in the Department of Justice. It was like um, the, the, I think it was the Commodities Commission was going to like uh, bring forth some charges because people were uh, money laundering, which sounded really weird. Uh, and actually, one of the lawyers, uh, Travinsky, came out and said, they don't do that. That's the Department of Justice job. So that doesn't make any sense. Uh, as far as like money laundering with cryptocurrency. So it's just a lot of things that were going on. And it always makes me think like, what's the agenda behind the agenda really is what's going on. So first of all, let's just take a look real quick. Whales, whales, everybody's uh, least favorite subject. I mean, we always have to talk about them and uh, just discuss them. Oh, and then, and then real quick, just so you know, uh, the uh, our background is a little bit different today. They're still working on the uh, pool room. Hopefully by tomorrow it'll be done, but uh, we'll see. We had a reprieve on the weekend, but here we are. Anyhow, so we're talking about Bitcoin right here. And it talks about how Bitcoin hit an all-time high at almost 65,000, 64,895 per unit on April 14th. And we've got April 19th, 3 p.m. Uh, Paso, Texas time. And so April 14th, that was the all-time high of all-time highs. On Sunday, this Sunday, it dropped to a low of 51,541. 65,000 to pretty much 51,000 in a blink of an eye. That is, uh, that's amazing, right? That's like, that's like a huge drop. Well, in the, like I've always said, in, in the traditional space, that is like jump out of the window type of thing. Uh, you know, it's just an awful day for the stock market. It'll never rebound. But in crypto, 
that's not that big of a deal. I'm going to show you how much of it not a big of a deal uh, going forward. So, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. and it, it talks about you know why why this could have happened. It talks about the uh, uh, reduction hash rate because of the power outage in China, different places. And it sort of talks about how they, they use on-chain analysis to take a look at all the movement for uh, Bitcoin. And there was a there was a movement of plus fifty eight thousand coins that were went from one wall to another wall. And they said this is probably a new uh, cold Binance wall because they were tracking these things on Binance. But then there was plus twenty thousand and plus eleven thousand. Now who's to say that's not Binance or that's you know who it is? But when I take a look at this stuff. And everybody starts to surmise about what it is. Well, it's these whales, they're doing all these things, and I'm really concerned about what's going on because these whales and these whales and these whales. I'm like, I just don't care. I, I just, if whales are going to move things around, I, and I, I, I know what people say, Rob, you got to care because these whales are going to start selling and, and the market is going to start dumping and da da da, it's going to be awful. I'm like, really? Great. Go ahead. Do all the selling that you want and let everybody else get out. I don't care that that's going to happen. Uh, I've already got my positions. I have an exit strategy. I'm sitting pretty nice right now. And even if it drops a little bit, do you honestly think after what has happened this year with the institutions that are getting in, and these aren't just like institutions, like these little mom and pop places. I mean, we know all the different places, like, I mean, old places like uh, Mass Mutual, one of the oldest in insurance companies. We have PNY Mellon Bank, one of the oldest banks in the United States. We've got Tesla. We've got the micro strategies. We've got NYDIG bringing all these different players into the, into the whole market. And all these institutions who know all these things and all these different tricks in the traditional markets, do you not think that they are not trying to do these types of things to maybe move things around and pull that train back to really get paid? Not saying that's what it is, uh, financial advice, but sometimes it just makes me wonder what's the agenda behind the agenda. Now, I will say it, I will take it one step further. Maybe this is it. Maybe we reached the all time top of 64,000 and the bull runs over, and we're just going to be stagnant for the next couple of years. And all these different players that got into it, uh, and all the different institutions and hedge fund managers and pension. It just sounds ridiculous when I say it. And, uh, and, and insurance companies are like, you know what? That's, that's fine. We'll, we're okay with that. And uh, that's it. We're not going to buy anymore. Okay. All right. Maybe that, that, that could be it. I mean, it could be. And then to finish up, uh, eight and a half million Bitcoin from 2010 spent after sitting idle for over 10 years. And uh, I just want to throw this in because 150 Bitcoin from 2010 was transferred after the price of Bitcoin slid a, slid a few hours away, and all 150 Bitcoin worth eight and a half million today were mined on the uh, 2010, and it was my, mostly uh, mined by the same entity. So it says it talks about moving it. I don't know if it was sold. It just said it was moved. So I will just say this: if somebody somehow uh, was able to hold on to Bitcoin since 2010, uh, God bless you. Good for you. That's pretty amazing. And if you want to sell right now, you should be selling because that's uh, pretty pretty big. I mean. Eight and a half million. Who wouldn't? Who would do that right now? And I know some people will say, "But you can wait because it's going to go to 150 or 300 or 500 thousand." And I will just remind you, that person's goals are not your goals. My goals are not your goals, and your goals aren't everybody else's that is watching the uh, this video today. So just remember that whatever your goals are, just hit those goals, hit the exit strategies, and go. You know what? I want to get out with ten thousand dollars. Well, great. Set it up like that. Or I want to get out with ten billion dollars. Well, great. Well, first of all, call me because that'd be awesome. <laughs> you did that. And uh, that's about it. So this is just the, the first piece. And I want to take you down a little memory. I'm not saying things are going to repeat. I, I, I just can't say that. But these four year cycles, when we talk about those ad nauseum. Watch any of my videos in the last like four months. I've been talking about it all the time. Um, this is what's happened before. The only thing that really concerns me is that everybody else knows the four-year cycles and everybody else cycles, cycles, and everybody else knows uh, the technicals and everybody's looking at the, at the same chart. So maybe they are just gonna go, you know what, we're gonna dump it. But in my personal opinion, never underestimate greed. I think the whales have a pretty good setup. They're riding a gravy train with biscuit wheels. All they gotta do is pump it a little bit and then watch people buy like crazy and then crash it again if they wanted to. And then all the people who 
don't understand uh, these, this whole process will sell and then they will buy back at a lower price. And they can just keep doing And this until infinity, unless people like me and you just say, you know what? Um, you can sell, you can get out. Your goal is not my goals. I'm gonna hang on. I think it's gonna do pretty well. I'm just an investor, I'm not a trader. So that's it for me. Here's five examples. And this is like back in 2017. Actually, let me blow this up so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So when we talk about these corrections, and we just saw a pretty big correction, right? 65,000 down to 52. Whoa. Well, take a look at this. So when we're taking a look at these different price points, in 2017, Bitcoin spent 267 days in an upward trend and only about 100 in a downward. So since 2021, I mean, since 21, since January 1st, 2021, how have we been doing? Pretty damn good, I think. I think we went from uh, around 30, 29,000, 30,000, then to 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65. And now here we are in a little bit of a, uh, of a retracement. And that's exactly what happened in 2017. And if I took a look at the charts uh, in 2013, when there was an also other massive bull run, it was the same thing. So we're taking a look at this. This is just history, rhyming, repeating, whatever else you want to say. So the average time Bitcoin spent uptrend was around 50 days. All right. Not too bad. So what about this? Corrections are normal. Well, again, it's the same thing. In 2017, Bitcoin experienced five major corrections. The shortest retrace took only three days and the longest lasted over a damn month. So if you take a look at these bars, this is 21 days. This one here is 34 days. That's a heck of a long time. That's, you know, that's pretty big. Then 12 days here, only three days here, and then 15 days here at the very top. Uh, we're looking at 31 December, 2017. And that's pretty much when it went down a lot more after that. But I mean, look at this, three days, all right, 34 days. And I just wanna remind everybody, where are we? You know where we're at? We're right here. We're, we're, we're over here in April, right? And again, could, could a lot of institutions and uh, the big whales and big players go, you know what, I'm done playing. I think I'm gonna pull out. I don't like making all this, maybe. Uh, Maybe they're just tired. They're just like, you know, we want to, you know, get out of here. And uh, that could potentially be the case. I don't personally think it is. And um, only time will tell if I'm correct or incorrect. But, uh, you know, as, as the price, if the price went down today, I've already done a little bit of my exit strategy because these are the early price points. I would be okay with it, honestly, if it went, if it went this way. I just don't see it happening. Anyhow, let's, uh, let me close up and we'll finish this out. So again, shortest retrace only three days. Here was the interesting part. Every quarter or end of quarter, EOQ sees at least one strong Bitcoin correction. So again, right before April, he saw a correction. And then right before, uh, what is this, July or so? April, May, June, July. Yeah, he saw the correction. Then around October. And then of course, uh, the end of December. And I always talked about how I April is statistically not a really great month or actually, yeah, it's not a really great month for Bitcoin and crypto. And I always said it's because, I mean, just part of the reason is because in the US, we have to pay taxes on April 15th, all of us. And if we owe, like me, I got to pay taxes. However, it got pushed back to May 15th. So you never know. Uh, people have to sell off. I have to sell off some a little bit of crypto to pay for these taxes. Not much this time, thank God. But uh, that's what's going to happen. Anyhow, the only quarter that saw only one strong Bitcoin correction in 2017 was quarter two. We saw a pretty big, huge retracement. And this is the big one. I don't really care about this one. Five, corrections tended to be tend to be 30% to 40% deep. That's pretty big. Think about that. In one of the biggest bull runs in crypto history, I mean, besides 2013, now we're, we're coming up to here. You were looking at an average of between 29 to 40%, uh, or sorry, it was between 29 to 40%, and the average was 35%. That were the corrections. So when we take a look at all this, and we take a look and say, well, what's going on? What's happening? Well, we talked about what happened, and we talked about everything that happened over the weekend, and it could be pretty big. Now it's up to you for, for you to decide. And again, I, I believe that. Uh, you know, when you're sitting there watching me, I'm just one person in the whole ecosphere of information of where you should get your information from. Uh, don't just take my words for gospel, but uh, I would just tell you my personal opinion is as such. 
these these institutions and these big players and these whales uh i think they believe that this is going to go on for quite some time they're going to be playing different people who actually get in and get out uh and they're going to be making a lot of money do you really think i always think about this i don't really think that these inst- these these big players are like i'm content with just these three months that we had to really you know do our <laughs> do all our damage and whatnot I think um, that they're probably going to be like, well, everybody knows about the four-year cycles. Everybody knows about the uh, TA and the charts. The only thing that I think of is that they might start to crash things a little bit before a December, before a November. But at that point, um, I have my exit strategy in place. If you want to watch the video, and I'll link at the very end. You should be sitting pretty, you know, very nice. And just like we just talked about with that statement before uh, from the Rothschild. I never sell at the top and I never buy at the very bottom. We're never going to hit the absolute tops. We're never going to buy at the absolute bottoms. But I do believe that there's a lot of room to run. All right. So that's it for today. Hopefully that uh, gives you some direction about what's going on. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. And that's it for for this one. Um, I'll probably do a live stream tonight. So I'll see you on the next one.